Hi everyone, today we're looking at Ticket to Ride Rails and Sails, the new iteration in the ever-growing train series from Days of Wonder. Did I say trains? Yes, of course trains are still present in the game, but for the first time ever, Ticket to Ride also introduces boats to explore the entire world. Let me show you how it's played. Ticket to Ride Rails and Sails comes with a double-sided board featuring the entire world map on one side and the Great Lakes region on the other. No matter what side of the board the players choose, the goal of the game still remains the same. Players will be fighting over routes to claim in order to connect adjacent cities on the board and complete specific destination tickets. This time around, players will also be able to use ships to claim sea routes and build harbor to earn even more points. At the end of the game, the player with the most points wins the game. During the setup of the game, each player will receive plastic trains and ships to the color of his choice. Depending on the side of the board chosen, the number of pieces will be slightly different. If they're playing the world side, the players will each receive 25 trains and 50 ships. If they're playing the Great Lakes side, they'll receive 22 trains and 28 ships. Players will then have to make a decision. Out of everything they received, they're only allowed to keep 60 pieces for the world side and 50 pieces for the Great Lakes side. Within these limits, everyone can do whatever they want. Some will keep all their trains and get rid of some ships, some will keep all their ships and get rid of some trains, and some will do a little bit of both. But don't panic, the rulebook has some recommendations for first-timers or for players who just don't want to mess with all this. For example, for the world side, it recommends to keep only 20 trains and 40 ships. Players also get some travel cards. Here again, the number of cards depends on the side of the board played. A player will start the game with 3 train cards and 7 ship cards for the world side, but only with 2 train cards and 2 ship cards for the Great Lakes region. The rest of the cards are placed next to the board in two separate decks, three cards from each deck are revealed. Finally, each player gets three harbors which could be built to get points, and five ticket cards from which he'll have to keep at least three. Each ticket shows two cities that the players will have to connect in a way or another to collect points. At the end of the game, completed tickets will be worth points, while points will be subtracted from each incomplete ticket. Players should then choose wisely which tickets they want to keep. The tickets not selected are placed back under the ticket deck next to the board. Lastly, each player will put his scoring marker on the position 0 of the scoring track. The game is now set up and ready to start. During a turn, a player can take one and only one of the following five actions. She can claim her route, take new travel cards, draw new tickets, build a harbor, or exchange plastic pieces. Of course, the gist of the game is to claim routes between adjacent cities to eventually connect different places on the board and complete the corresponding tickets. To claim a route, a player must discard travel cards of the same color of the route he wants to claim. For example, to claim this route between Beijing and Hong Kong, he needs to discard two red travel cards or two green travel cards. Note that both routes are made of rectangle spaces, which means that they are train routes. The player then needs to play train travel cards. The oval spaces are for ships and thus need ship travel cards in order to be claimed. Once the appropriate cards are discarded, the player places his plastic trains on the board. No one else can now claim this path. The route between Beijing to Hong Kong is a double route, which means that another player can still claim the white route. In a two or three player game, the double routes are considered a single route only. As soon as one of the two routes is claimed, the other one closes immediately. Claiming a sea route works exactly the same. The player needs to discard ship travel cards of the correct color to claim the route. For instance, a player should discard 5 red ship cards to claim the route connecting Tokyo to Honolulu, which is technically impossible since there are only 4 ship cards of each color in the deck. The player would then need to use double ship cards or wild cards in order to claim the route. Wild cards can only be found in the train deck, but they can replace a train or a ship travel card of any color. Double ship cards are only found in the ship deck and they each count for 2 spaces when played to claim a route. Coming back to the Tokyo Honolulu route, a player has different options. He can play any combination of red, single and double ship cards and wild cards. For example, the player can claim the route by discarding 2 red single ships, 1 red double ship and 1 wild card. Or by discarding 2 red double ships and 1 wild card. Or even by discarding 5 wild cards, that works too. 
All the grey routes on the board can be claimed with any color, but the cards must be all of one color. All black, all green, all yellow, and so on. When a player claims a route, he scores points according to the size of that route. A 2-space route is worth 2 points, while a 8-space route is worth 21 points. The score track on the side of the board should be adjusted each time someone gets some points. Here Yellow had 2 points for his route connecting Beijing to Hong Kong, and Blue just scored 10 points for his 5-space route in between Tokyo and Honolulu. Some cities are connected by pair routes, which represents difficult terrain to cross. In order to claim such routes, the players will simply need to discard two train cards of the same color for each space on the board. For instance, a player who wants to claim the route between Beijing and Lahore can discard two red cards for the first space, two black cards for the second space, and one yellow and a wild card for the third space. Pair routes don't provide more points, they are just more difficult to claim. Instead of claiming a route, a player can spend her turn getting new travel cards. She can then take two face-up cards and replace each one of them with a card from either deck, train or ship. In this game, it is legal to take a ship card and replace it with a train card. During the game, the reserve could then be showing only train cards or only ship cards. Instead of taking face-up cards, a player can decide to draw blind from the decks. Two ship cards, two train cards, one of each, or even draw one blind and take a second one from the face-up reserve or vice versa. Although, if a player takes a face-up wild card, it is the only card she can take. She cannot get another one. Following the same idea, a player cannot draw his first card blind from the deck and take a face-up wild card. But, with a little bit of luck, she can draw a wild card from the deck and take another face-up card, or even draw blind two wild cards. If ever three wild cards are visible at the same time, all six cards must be discarded and replaced with other cards. After several turns, as the player draw travel cards and claim routes, they will eventually manage to complete tickets by finding a way to connect the two cities mentioned on one of their ticket cards. A player doesn't tell the others that he completed a ticket, but he knows that at the end of the game, that ticket will earn him the number of points indicated on the card. If the ticket is not completed at the end of the game, he will lose as many points. Ticket to Ride Rails and Sales introduces a new kind of tickets, tour tickets. These can only be found on the world side of the board, not in the Great Lakes region. They are also more difficult to complete as the player will have to connect several cities in a specific order if he wants to get the most points out of the card. Here, if a player manages to trace a route going from Tehran to Lahore, Mumbai and Bangkok in that specific order, he'll score 13 points. If he connects the cities, but not exactly as mentioned on the card, he'll get only 9 points. Finally, if he cannot connect to the cities, he'll lose 19 points. There are only 8 tour tickets in the deck, and they are more or less difficult to complete, but they can score a lot of points like this 34-point tour going from Anchorage to Cambridge Bay to Reykjavik, Murmansk and Tixi. No matter how many tickets he has in his hand, a player can always draw 4 new tickets as his turn. He'll have to keep at least one of them, but can also decide to keep them all. Here again, each incomplete ticket is worth negative points at the end of the game. At her turn, a player can also build one of her three harbors in a city connected to a route she's already claimed. To build a harbor, a player must discard two train cards and two ship cards, the city and all four cards must show the anchor symbol. Here again, wild cards could replace any of these cards. At the end of the game, each harbor score points depending on how many completed tickets are going into this city. On the world side of the board, a harbor is worth 20 points if one completed ticket goes into it, 30 points if two completed tickets go into it, and 40 points if three or more completed tickets go into it. On the Great Lakes region, a harbor score respectively 10, 20 or 30 points under the same conditions. For instance, on the world map, a player built a harbor in Marseille and completed three tickets listing Marseille onto them. Marseille Al Caira, Marseille Beijing and New York Marseille. That player will score 40 points for this harbor. Of course, it is not allowed to build two ports in the same city, and at the end of the game, each player will lose 4 points per harbor not built. Finally, on this turn, a player can exchange plastic pieces for others taken out of the box, trains for ships or ships for trains, according that the player doesn't go over the fixed cap for each map. Each exchange costs 1 point to the player. So exchanging 4 trains for 4 ships comes with a penalty of 4 points. This is why it is important to choose wisely how many trains and how many ships to keep at the beginning of the game. And that's it! So, to sum up. 
A player on this turn can either claim a route, take new travel cards, draw new tickets, build a harbor, or exchange train or boat pieces. The game will continue until a player has only six or less pieces. At that point, everyone, including that player, will play two more turns and it will be time to tally up the final score. First, the players look at their current score given by the route they claimed during the game. They can always recount that and adjust their markers accordingly. But don't forget to subtract the points for every exchanged pieces during the game. Each player will then add the points for their completed tickets and their built harbors, and finally subtract points for the tickets they did not complete and the harbors they did not build. At that point, the player with the most points wins the game. Note that this version of Ticket to Ride doesn't grant any bonuses to the player with the longest route or the most completed tickets. Before I go, let me give you a sneak peek at the differences between the two sides of the board. The world side has a map that wraps around the board, which means that some routes will go from one side to the other. For instance, there is a 6 bay sea route going from Tokyo to Vancouver. No such routes exist on the Great Lakes map. As mentioned earlier, the tour tickets don't exist on the Great Lakes side of the board, nor do the pair routes, and the harbor of the Great Lakes score fewer points than on the world map. Finally, the players will start with fewer travel cards and fewer pieces to conquer the lakes, but will be able to claim up to a 9 space route to earn 27 points. And there you go, now you know everything you need to know to play Ticket to Ride Rails and Sails, so sail away, have fun, and I'll see you in another episode. Take care.